Let's take a fun look at a webtoon, judge it unmercifully, and maybe we'll all learn something along the way. Now, doesn't that sound like fun? Hey, Walter here, doing what I can to make webtoons and comics easier because it shouldn't be overwhelming or daunting to tell your story. I make videos about making comics, so if that's something you're into, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. By the way, these critiques are my opinion and are suggestions, not prescriptions. There's more than one way to art, and none of them are wrong or better. They're just different. Okay, today's creator-submitted webtoon is Palisandra by Jesse Page Dawson. The summary reads, Palisandra is a rosewood puppet. She feels no pain, no hunger, and has no free will. All she has in the world is the friendship of a lonely little girl named Dana, whose love brings her to life. This is a point and click style retelling of Pinocchio about how far a little marionette will go to become a real girl and reunite with the one she loves. I really like this summary. It's very short, tells us about the characters and what's going to happen, and even tells us about a really interesting mechanic that the story is going to have. I'm a huge fan of the point and click adventure games, so I might be a little biased. The only thing is you might wanna mention what the big bad is, like, What's the villain or is there a big problem that needs to be solved? You mentioned that Palisandra wants to reunite, but why is she separated? What's stopping her from reuniting? You told me that you changed your summary a little bit because you realized you wouldn't get to the main plot point anytime soon. It might be a good idea though to put some of that back in so the readers know what you're working towards. They might be more willing to sit through a lot of setup if they know eventually that this thing is going to happen, whatever that thing is. Now let's go ahead and move into the story setup. We start with an action scene, which is one of my favorite ways to start a story. It just ramps up the energy level before you get into the bulk of the story. I think you did a good job making the mechanics of point and click clear for readers who might not be familiar with that kind of game style. I know all too well the pain of chaos clicking, but how many readers are going to understand that? I don't know if click and point are as popular as they used to be. A potential problem that I didn't realize until after I read episode 20 is that there's a lack of consequence. No matter how many times Palisandra dies, they get another chance. I didn't notice in the first episodes because I was having too much fun with the game mechanic itself. So this isn't a deal breaker right now and I think you might have hinted at some consequences to poor choices in episode 20, but I would say this is something you may want to think about. Otherwise, you might lose that sense of urgency and tension that's gonna keep your readers hooked. I'd also warn against naming your episode cleared since that also removes any tension of that episode. Now, I know you're a little worried about your story being a slow burn. Having increasing tension is a good way to keep those readers hooked. Granted, I was able to binge your comic, but even if your story is a slow burn, the episodes themselves aren't slow or tedious, which is great. You're doing a good job of keeping individual episodes fun and giving enough entertainment value per episode, so I don't think readers will feel cheated. There was one exception, the scene where Dana was helping her parents solve their problems. It was a very cute scene, and I think you were setting up some stuff and doing some character exploration, but it might have run a little long. They are four longer episodes, and they are dialogue heavy, and the main thing that happens during that, those four episodes is that Dana helps her parents define two words. I'm oversimplifying it because there are some other things that happen, some clever and well-executed things that might be foreshadowing or setting up characters. I'm just guessing uh, since I don't really know what the full story is. But the question is, could you have achieved the same setup in less episodes? I can't really answer that for you, but it's something to think about for future episodes. It can be tricky to see the pacing of our own stories because we're too deep in it and we know too much. I like to create a little spreadsheet that has the episode number, a one to three line summary, the why, and an energy gauge. The why is the purpose of the episode. Why does it need to exist? What purpose does it serve to the narrative, to the character, world building, or you know, it could just be there for fun. 
The energy gauge is there to quickly visualize the ebb and flow of our episodes. A simple one, two, or three, a two is a normal episode, three is crazy energy, and one is slow but necessary. If you notice you have a bunch of ones back to back, maybe put on your editor hat and figure out if you can combine some of those episodes together or if you can take some of the why and push it to a different spot in your story. Spread out the slow stuff. Not, now, I'm not saying that all episodes have to be crazy. They don't have to be. Sometimes you need episodes to dump information or bring a little bit of calm before the storm. Also, I don't mean crazy as in action stunts and fighting. It could be an argument, a breakup, finding a clue, revealing a plan, a character making a big decision. A moment in the story that propels the story to the next big thing. The end of your 20th episode is a really great example of a three, I think. Now, a self-realization I made on my part, the parent scene I'm talking about might have seemed slower because the episodes before the scene were very short and very snappy action scenes, not that much dialogue. Then in the parent scene, suddenly the mood shifts. The colors were more somber, there was more dialogue, and the episode lengths also increased. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, of course, if it's intentional. Though I would say try to keep your episode length similar. You don't want an episode with five panels and then the next episode is 50 panels. It's okay to take those long episodes and split them up into three episodes. It's okay to end on cliffhangers. I'm told readers love cliffhangers all the time. As for the rest of the story, I'm getting a good sense of your characters and the dialogue you have flows really well. It's a very enjoyable story to read for sure. Now let's go ahead and move into the art and check out your thumbnail. I think this thumbnail is pretty solid. Only thing I would suggest is either making the background white or changing it to a different color, maybe a nice vibrant sky blue. This will help draw more attention to the character's face by creating a stronger silhouette. As for your sequential art and your storytelling, I gotta say, I really love what you're doing. There's a lot of fun techniques that you're doing with your panels as far as like transitions and implementing, implementing that kind of video game mechanic into the art. The way you're playing around with time and movement is pretty clever as well. This scene right here where Palisandra is heroically escaping by sliding down the rope only to reveal they didn't actually go anywhere at all. Then in this scene, Palisandra has to stealthily move from one column to another. And you have the scroll rolling down with the panels, keeping it all to get together and moving together. Now, one of my favorite panels is where Dana steps out of their room and then we step into Palisandra's puppet world. I really, really love that. So really solid storytelling, um, really strong backgrounds, camera angles, panel variety, poses, expression, etc. All that is really good. There were a couple of things that I do want to nitpick though, since everything else was so strong. This pose or this particular drawing shows up a lot. I'm all about reusing art, but this one pops up a lot. So you might be reusing it too much. Overall, I really like your colors, but here where Dana is sleeping, it's sort of blue tinged. And then in these next set of panels, it becomes orange tinged. It's not sure if that was an intentional thing, like that was video game mode or something, uh, but you might want to check that out. The only time I really thought you could have improved on your storytelling a little was this scene with the darts. Maybe just a sound effect of thwip or whip, or maybe some blurred motion lines. The way you draw Palisandra also seems to change a little bit. Sometimes it's obviously intentional for different moments in the story, like going from cutesy cartoony to serious cross-hatching moments. I love stuff like that. I do it myself all the time. They do it in One Punch Man and I freaking love it. But other times in what I think are normalish moments, Palisandra's face will get softer in some panels and more structured in others. Usually I wouldn't bring this stuff up because it's just something that we all improve on over time. But you're doing such an awesome job with Dana's face uh, as far as consistency goes that Palisandra's inconsistencies seem a little odd. I wonder if it would be good to copy some of your favorite panels of Palisandra's face and then do a head turnaround that you can use as, re as reference. Like I said, I think it's cool for the style changes for the mood, but example in this panel, the style change just kind of seemed out of place. And one super silly thing, this panel, the line of the building is going over the rope. Oh, the horror. All right, let's move on to my favorite. Okay, everyone ready? I love this lettering. It's really crisp and well done. 
lots of attention to detail, pro looking font, great size, easy to read. I mean, look at this scroll balloon and these choice boxes. That's a lot of work. Also, these balloons that you use for Dana look great and have tons of personality and you keep them consistent. Though I think you might have been testing out some different techniques for Palisandra's world in those first episodes. The balloon colors seem to be changing from one panel to the next with no reason and sometimes she had the occasional floppy balloon tail. Really love these two balloons though, those are super fun. Your more recent chapters in Palisandra's world are looking a lot cleaner and more consistent. So if you have the time, I'd maybe go clean up the lettering in those older episodes, you know, if you can and have the time. Otherwise, I dig it a lot. Okay, that's Palisandra by Jesse Page Dawson. Now this was a requested critique by the creator of the comic. I do not offer unsolicited critiques because I don't think it's cool to force my thoughts on someone who might not be in a place to process my intrusion on their mental state. The link to the comic is in the description. Check the comic out, give it 10 stars, leave them a nice comment, and because it's the nice thing to do since they willingly sacrificed their comic just so that we could all learn stuff. Now, if you want me to review your comic, check out my Patreon page. You can also get access to my super secret Discord where you can get additional help and share your art and your journey. I also do mentorships and portfolio reviews over there. Now, if you wanna just keep making comics easier, be sure to like, link, love, hug, and hit that sub button for more sweet, sweet goodness. Remember, if you need a break, it's okay to take one. Catch you in the next video. Peace.